Hey, good afternoon, GX community. This is GX Bob coming to you guys to do a much anticipated video. If you guys have been watching uh, quite a few of my prior videos, I've been having my bumper off only because I've been doing this project for quite some time. It is the transmission cooler installation for the GX460. And the reason why I've taken so long, it's been about a couple of months already, only because I wanted to make sure I got all the steps correct. I wanted to make sure I didn't skip any steps. I wanted to make sure that this installation video was easy to understand and easy to follow. So if you guys have been watching um, a lot of other YouTube videos um, and a lot of write-ups, uh, one of the main questions you're probably asking is, how did he get from step A to step B? Was he missing a couple of steps in here? I, I don't get it. And I, I feel your pain. I, I asked those questions also. Another question I asked was, um, why did he choose to do it this way when this way was easier or vice versa? I wanted to understand. So I'm just going to go straight into the installation. And at the end of the video, I'm going to answer all of these questions for you guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need to do is pull off your front bumper. I'm going to send you guys a link on how to pull off the front bumper. So I'm not going to waste a lot of video footage just showing you guys how to pull a bumper. I'm pretty sure you guys already know how to pull a bumper with all the moss that we've been doing so far. And jack up your video, uh, jack up your vehicle because we're going to be crawling underneath. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started, guys. These are the basic tools you're going to need. You're going to need needle nose pliers. You're going to need a uh, hose plier from Harbor Freight. You're gonna need wire cutters. You're gonna need a quarter inch socket. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket, ratchet, or if you prefer, use one of these. Uh, and you're also gonna need a 10 millimeter gear wrench and a 10 millimeter backup gear wrench, okay? And you're gonna need at least a quart of ATS, WS, and the pump. And plenty, plenty of rags, guys. Alcohol. And that's about it, pretty basic. We're gonna take a 12 millimeter, we're gonna remove these two bolts right here. We're gonna unplug this gray plug You look down here, there's a sensor plug right here. We're going to pull it off. We're going to route everything to this side. In order to do that, we're going to have to unplug our horns. Okay. Take the horns off its plug. Both horns. Now we're gonna take our cluster of wires right here and we are going to route it in back of this bracket. Now we have entire clear accessibility to install our transmission cooler. So here's the box guys, Hayden Rapid Cooler. Um, here's the 678 model number. This is what the box is gonna look like, okay? I'm going to go ahead and open it up. This is not the first time I am opening up. I had to open it up to actually take a look at all the parts and pieces in order to uh, put all the steps in place for you guys. Set that aside. Let's go ahead and open this up. Here's the transmission cooler. Okay, it's about 11 inches in height. You got, um, you got two nipples right here. One is going to be an inlet, one is going to be an outlet. Doesn't matter which is which. No, it doesn't matter. It's interchangeable. So the best way to do this is to find out how we're going to locate this in the front of our vehicle. And from there, we are going to able to be able to efficiently route our lines. OK, OK, you got a whole bunch of tidbits right here. Most likely I'm not going to be using any of this. And if I do, it will probably be these clamps. I'll probably use the clamps. I'll probably use these little foam stickers in order to protect our cooler from, you know, from the structure itself so it doesn't chafe or it doesn't rub against anything and cause any damages later on, unforeseen damages, okay? So let's go ahead and set this aside. 
You guys, so here's a little tiny uh, secret that you, uh, a lot of people don't know, okay? The box that it comes in, if you take a look at it on the other side, it comes out of these weird tabs. If you take a look at these, they do punch out. Go ahead and just go ahead and take one out. I'm just going to give you a pretty good example right here on what these tabs actually do, okay? So if we take um, one of these tabs out, okay you're going to probably wonder what the hell is this for so if we bring our transmission cooler to the vehicle you're going to see exactly what these are for this is genius guys come on so check this out guys i am going to install this transmission cooler suspended in mid-air i took these cardboard bracket makers from hayden from the back of the box and i started putting my transmission cooler where I thought might be a good space and then I started putting these tablets on here and I started making brackets imaginary brackets where where a good place might be so I chose two places I chose two places I eventually made these two brackets right here I'm going to show you right now with the top bracket template that I used cardboard to create with I already drew out my shape my dimensions and here they are you guys can go ahead and copy this is the front view and this is the side view of the bracket and this is what I came up with right here see that look at that the bottom bracket this is what it's going to look like so let's go ahead and uh, put this to the transmission cooler so you could see exactly what it looks like and how it um, takes shape here's the bottom bracket these two holes are going to line up with these two holes I'm going to attach it with some M6 bolts or any kind of bolt and nuts that you find at the hardware store it's gonna be like that and this piece right here this L shape right here is going to attach to the center beam of my vehicle I just haven't drilled the holes yet because I want to attach this onto the transmission cooler first and locate it on the vehicle and take a sharpie and go ahead and mark it I want it to be um, a more exact fit that way so with the top bracket this is what I did see the holes that I drilled out I did it with a blank piece of aluminum and all I did was put it up here and I took a sharpie, marked it, and I drilled the holes, okay? So once I attach it to the transmission cooler, it's gonna take shape just like this. It's gonna be a Z shape. This right here is going to be attached to where my horn used to be. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it, and I'm gonna drill a hole right there too. Okay, so let's go ahead and take it to the vehicle just so you see what it looks like. So if I was to take this, and I was to install this at the bottom, it would go just like this it would attach to the side right here we have two holes right here in our center beam I would make this bracket and attach it to those two holes right there once I attach that I would take this bracket right here and I would attach it to this hole that used to be where our horn was and it would go right there and I would make a hole right there what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and attach these to the transmission cooler first by drilling holes where, there's, where they need to be. So what I did was I took my clamp, I positioned it where I needed it to be. I already took a sharpie and I made my holes right here. I took a C-clamp and I held the bracket to the transmission cooler and I'm going to go ahead and start drilling my hole. The hole that I want to make is going to be big enough to fit the bolt that I'm going to be choosing to use. Um, it, most likely it's going to be an M6 bolt. The top bracket is going to take shape like this and it's going to attach where the horn is. See that? Pretty nice, huh? So let's go take a look at the bottom bracket. Here's the bottom bracket. It's going to attach with those two holes right there and it's going to go to the center right here. We're going to drill a hole right there by getting a sharpie going to this end and marking a spot where I'm going to be drilling the hole. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach these brackets to the transmission cooler. 
So I went inside the garage and went ahead and grabbed my box of goodies. You're going to need a couple of bolts just to hold these brackets temporarily in place so you can mark the other holes. So I got a 10 millimeter M6 right here with a nut. I am going to, like I said, temporarily install this only. Put the bolt through there and the other nut right here. The nut that I got is one of those lock nuts. It has like Teflon in there, I think nylon in there so it could lock it tight. So I don't have to use any type of uh, lock washers later on. There we go. We got both brackets on. So let's go ahead and take this to the vehicle. We're going to remove this bolt right here. Set it aside. We're going to line this up and take a look at it. Let's check out the fit. There we go. Not too bad, huh? Not too shabby. It's at a slight slant, but I think I could bend this bracket back a little bit more in order to straighten it up. So let me show you the top view of what it's going to look like. It's going to be suspended just like that. And I think these two brackets are going to be sturdy enough to hold my transmission cooler. Uh, you guys feel free to customize your own type of brackets, even add additional brackets you f if you feel more secure by holding it with three or four brackets instead of just two. I'm just going to use two guys. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and mark my holes. I find out that the fitting is fairly nice and I'm going to go ahead and mark the holes down here also. And I'm going to start drilling. So now we're going to go ahead and hook up the brackets. We got the bottom bracket here. We got the top bracket here. We got a M6 bolt with a nylon lock washer. I mean a nut. I got another one up here. And I got an M6 bolt with the nut here. M6 bolt with the nut here. So there's two. There's two. Two per bracket right now. Okay. And I got, I'm going to put two washers per bolt. Okay one underneath the head of the fastener and one uh, common to the nut itself so let's go ahead and get started make sure you all your fasteners and all your hardware are stainless steel okay and i'm going to explain why at the end you want to choose stainless steel okay so let's go ahead and start with the bottom bracket we're going to go ahead and take off one of our nuts here remember this is an m6 m6 by maybe i don't know um three quarters of an inch I'm going to put a washer here. I'm going to go ahead and go through this hole right here. I'll put the bracket to it. And I'm going to put another washer on the back of here. And I'm going to put the nut. Look at that. You guys don't have to tighten this all the way if you don't want to. If you're not very confident where the other hole is going to land on your vehicle, you can just leave it a little tiny bit loose like I just did. And I'm going to do the final tightening later on. We're going to take off this bolt that holds the horn. We're going to set it aside. We're just going to check for fitment first. We're not going to do the install because I am going to add a uh, rubber grommets and foam washers behind here let's find out the holes right here come to find out it's a perfect fit so let's take a look at it this is what it's going to look like once the installation is complete is that a pretty nice custom installation and look how much access you have to the radiator firewall through here this nipple goes through here this nipple can go through here with those hoses Okay, so let's go ahead and finish the rest of your installation. This bottom one, we're going to need a longer nut. Um, I mean a longer fastener, and I'll tell you guys why in a minute. You're going to go to your local hardware store, and you're going to buy this rubber grommet. Okay, the part number is right there. The dimensions are right there. It's made by Hillman. 
Okay, if you open this up, this rubber grommet looks exactly like this. And it's gonna fit your M6 bolt, okay? It's got a very narrow inner diameter right here and the outer diameter is perfect one inch, I believe. And you're gonna take this and you're gonna stick it in this hole. There's two holes right here. You're gonna stick it in the most front hole. You're gonna take the narrow part of it and shove it in that hole. It should be a great fit. Once you shove it in that hole, it should stay in place. Let's go take a look at it. And there's a reason why I'm installing this grommet, guys, because if I were to install my radiator, I mean my transmission cooler, and putting a bolt right through there, let's go ahead and pretend I'm going to use this bolt. I'm not going to use this bolt. I'm going to need a longer bolt, so I'm going to have to go back to the hardware store. I'm going to stick it through that grommet, and look at that. Look at the offset. The offset perfect. I have a rubber piece right here. I'm going to put a big washer back there with a nut and it's going to hold my bracket to my radiator. I mean my transmission cooler in place just like that. The reason why I'm doing this is because I do not, I do not, let me repeat, I do not want metal to metal like this. And I'm going to explain why at the end of the video. This portion of the video, I'm just going to do the installation. Okay, now we're going to disconnect the battery guys we're going to take off this tie down right here which requires two 10 millimeter bolts so the reason why we took off our battery is because we need a lot of access right here this is where we're going to be routing our hoses and dis disconnecting lines right here We're gonna grab the hose that came with the Hayden kit and we're gonna cut it to size. The top hose, we cut it to 22 inches long. The bottom hose, we cut it to 26 inches long. All I did was use a normal razor blade to cut it to size. I already did the pre-fit and the pre-measurement from the cooler to the transmission and the cooler to the radiator. I'm going to grab these two hose clamps that came with the Hayden kit. I'm going to slide it onto each one. Make sure your hoses are pushed all the way in until you see no more gray, or at least all the way to the tip of the gray color. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in. I want this to be out of the way of anything else. So I'm always going to put these on the inside. I'm going to use a quarter inch socket. Take the second one, I'm going to install on here. We're back at our vehicle. We're going to take a piece of foam square that came with our cooler kit, our Hayden cooler kit, and we are going to take this 12 millimeter that is supposed to attach the horn. and we're gonna poke it in the middle. There's already a hole right there. We're gonna open up the hole a little bit. You could get some random object to open up the hole. Right on there. Make sure you have the rubber grommet from your hardware store in place in, in the very forward hole this hole is left empty the rubber grommet goes right there now we're gonna go ahead and install our cooler let's get the cooler installation ready the bottom bracket is going to get a 1 inch M6 two washers and a lock mini nut the top bracket is just going to take that same 12 millimeter bolt that was used to hold your horn. Let's take this to the vehicle. Come to your car. These two foam covers right here, you're going to get a razor blade and you can make two long slits into them. These are where the hoses are going to pass through. We're going to take our cooler. We're going to take our 12 millimeter bolt here and we're going to slip it through 
and tighten it up here. The bottom, one inch M6, put a washer underneath the head. We're going to slide it through the hole in this bracket through the rubber grommet. On the other side, put on a washer. On the other side, put on your mini nut. Go ahead and get a 12 millimeter and tighten this top bolt right here. Make sure your cooler is parallel to the beam of the vehicle. Make sure it's exactly where you want it and nothing is riding and go ahead and tighten. Do the same for the bottom bracket. I'm using a 10 millimeter for my backup and a 10 millimeter to tighten this bolt. I'm grabbing a one inch block to put right here for support so I can continue to do my tightening down here so this doesn't get pushed into the beams. I'm going to go ahead and remove the block. See how parallel that is? Look at the clearance. Look at the clearance. It's not riding anything and right behind there there's my mini nut. Okay. I'm still going to keep this block behind here until I'm completely done with everything else. You grab yourself an empty bucket, go ahead and place it right here where your battery used to be. I'm going to take my upper hose and I'm going to put it right here. This is where my overfill is going to stay while I fill up my cooler with transmission fluid. Grab yourself a quart of ATFWS from Toyota. Get yourself a bottle pump from your local auto parts store. Screw it on here. We're going to bring your ATF WS to the vehicle, we're going to attach its hose to the bottom hose of your cooler. We're going to stop, we're going to start pumping WS into the cooler until you see it flowing out of your upper radiator hose into this overfill bucket. Once you see it overfilling in there, you're going to grab a screw or any kind of plug and you're going to plug up this hose. I put a catch can right underneath my ATF bottle in order to disconnect this and let this run into catch can and I'm going to go ahead and plug up the lower hose with another plug. I just went into the hardware store and I looked and I brought my hose with me and I found out I found any bolt that would fit the inner diameter of this hose to use as a plug. One thing to look for right now, look for any leaks. 
Okay. You're going to take these hoses and you're going to end up rounding it through these foam pads right here. Let's go ahead and remove this overfill bucket and let's take a look down there. Okay guys, uh, the next clip is going to include some really bad camera angles and some lighting issues, but I'm going to try to do the best I can. But at the end of the video, I'm going to go ahead and draw out the diagram, the flow map for you guys, for you guys to better understand what goes where. Okay, so don't worry if it's not captured in this clip and you're not able to um, distinguish what is what because it is kind of deep down there that we're going to be working on. Okay, so sit tight. The next area we're going to work into, follow me, follow me. See this radiator cap? We're going to follow this radiator cap all the way down. You see, this is going to be your top inlet going into your radiator, but we are not going to touch this one. We're going to touch the bottom one, that one where my finger is, that one right there. That is the one that we're going to disconnect this hose, this hose that's going to go in there. This upper hose is going to attach to that radiator outlet. This bottom hose right here, this bottom hose is going to connect to the other end of that radiator outlet, wherever it is. It's on the bottom of our vehicle, and we'll get to that point a little later on. The top hose and the bottom hose are taped together, so we're going to have to get a razor blade to cut that piece of tape so they become separate. I discovered lying underneath the car looking up I had better access to remove this tape. This is the tape that was holding your upper hose and your bottom hose of your radiator to your transmission. You're going to need to cut this off. Be very, very, very careful you don't slice into the existing hoses, okay? Because we're only removing one of the hoses. The other hose stays. The upper hose stays. We're going to have to remove, see that the tip of my pen right there, we're going to have to remove that hose clamp with a pair of needle nose pliers. These are the two tools I'll be using. I'm going to be using a needle nose pliers to remove that hose clip and slide it back so it's not on the inlet itself. And if you guys don't own one of these, please, please go buy a set from Harbor Freight. They're cheap. They are hose removers, okay? All I have to do is clamp around the hose and jiggle it and then pull it and the hose comes out instead of trying to take it out by hand because you have to remember these hoses have been on your vehicle for I don't know five six seven years depending on how old your vehicle is it's already crusted on there okay this if you grab a hold of the hose and you wiggle it with this and you pull it at the same time it comes out so much easier it's always a good idea to keep your hoses upright because even in a downward <coughs> even if I left this hanging even if I put on the screw, you're still going to get some a little bit of seepage. So if you guys could find some type of plug that will hold on to the fluid in there pretty tightly, great. With this screw right here, I did see a little bit of seepage. So I did pump some more fluid in here just to make sure I topped it off and I put the screw back on. And I'm keeping this hose in an upright position so I don't have any more spills. I'm laying my catch pad underneath because we're going to start disconnecting the bottom hose of the radiator. I'm going to take my upper coolant hose and I'm going to route it through the upper foam pad right here. Keep it in an upright position. It's going to go through here. I kept it up in an upright position using this notch right here to hold my hose in place. This next part of the installation, you guys have to gonna have to picture this because it's gonna be difficult to put the camera in there to show you guys. But what I'm doing is that bottom radiator hose that I'm dislodging and disconnecting, I'm assuming fluid is gonna flow out of there. So we're gonna have to do this quick, okay? So once I dislodge that hose from the bottom of the radiator, we are going to immediately take this hose and plug it in to cap off the flow of the, the fluid if there's any seepage, okay? But before we do that, we're gonna have to take another hose clamp that came with your heating kit 
and we're going to go ahead and put it on t over here and tighten it snug but not too tight because we want to be able to put this hose into that outlet of that bottom radiator um, nipple okay so go ahead and use an uh, eight uh, I think it was a uh, a quarter inch and go ahead and tighten this very loosely okay remember loosely top hose I'm gonna go put this clamp on here I'm gonna snug it up a little bit very loosely loose enough to keep this clamp on there without it sliding off by itself but I'm not gonna tighten it there you go so what we're doing right now is we are going to remove this from the lower radiator outlet okay we're going to remove this we're going to use a pair of pliers and pull this hose off and when we pull that hose off we better be ready to take this upper hose from your cooler and plug it in there immediately okay so this is going to be a try to be a quick process as much as possible what i'm doing right now is i'm going to unscrew this and keep it in an upright position ready to go so i don't waste my time trying to unscrew this once i open up that uh, lower nipple okay so we're going to go ahead and unscrew this first and keep it in an upright position I'm using the radiator and the support beam right here in front to hold it in an upright position okay there folks barely anything came out so that's a good thing okay so let's go ahead and plug our upper coolant hose into there There you go guys, super success. Now we're gonna take that hose clamp, we're gonna slide it down there and we're gonna tighten it up, okay? Use a ratchet with a quarter inch socket and I had to just do this the whole entire time. Just tighten like this, cause it's facing at a 90 degree angle. I totally forgot it wasn't facing up to, for us to be able to use an extension. So this is what you're gonna have to resort to, okay? Okay, so now that we're done with the upper coolant hose, we're going to work on the bottom coolant hose right now. We're not going to route this through there just yet because I don't want to have this pointing downward. I might get seepage. I'm going to keep this upright until I'm ready to connect this hose line, okay? So we're going to go underneath the vehicle, underneath the vehicle to the right of your peacock. Your peacock is that yellow turn knob that releases all your radiator coolant. We're going to go to the right of it, and there's going to be two hard lines that point up. We are going to be working on that hard line that is closest to the driver's side. We are going to disconnect that hose. That is the other end of the hose that was connected to this end of your uh, uh, cooler. So we're going to go underneath, grab a set of needle nose pliers, and we're going to unhook, dislodge that hose clamp, and we're going to pull that hose off. We don't have to worry about seepage because the line that we're going to be working on is pointed upward. So any seepage that you get is just going to be residue from the hose that you're going to be removing. It's going to be like a U-shaped hose that we're removing. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera down there just so you guys could get a, uh, a visual of what we're doing. Kind of had to explain exactly what I'm doing first just so it can process in your head first, okay? Here is your yellow peacock. This is your radiator coolant release, okay? So to the right of it is this hard line that we're going to be working with. There's going to be two hard lines. You do not want to mess with the hard line that is on the passenger side. You, we are going to dislodge this hose that's on the driver's side, okay? So we're going to take a plier, pair of pliers and release this clamp. I got my catch cat underneath just in case. Grab my Harbor Freight hose dislodger tool. This is such an excellent tool, guys. I can grab a hold of the hose and wiggle with it. Once I wiggle with it, I can go ahead and grab the top portion and pull on it, or I can go to the top of the vehicle and pull on it, and it'll come dislodged. There it is, guys. There is no seepage whatsoever. Oh, well, it's coming from the hose, so that's not important. I don't want seepage coming out of the system. I want the system to be completely full with the exact amount of uh, ATF that already was in there. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab the lower hose of our cooler 
and install it on here. Make sure you have your hose clamp ready to go. We're gonna take our lower coolant hose and we're gonna route it through this foam piece, okay? We're gonna go ahead and route it through this foam piece and keep it in an upright position once we get it where the battery area is. We got it routed through the battery area. I'm keeping it in an upright position. I'm gonna go ahead and put on a hose clamp right now, but I'm gonna do something differently than what I did with the lower coolant line. I am going to use the OEM one instead. Here is the OEM one. We're going to take off the OEM one. We're going to go ahead and slide it onto our lower cooler hose and keep it right there. We're going to start routing this down there now. I'm going to grab my needle nose. I'm going to go ahead and attach my clamp. Right now I'm going to grab a bottle of alcohol and I'm going to start cleaning the structure against the battery right here that is coming in contact with my hoses in order to put the foam pads on. The foam pads I grab from the Hayden coolant box. They come free. Uh, they come with four pieces. Okay, so you can cut them out and it's uh, double sided tape right here. So let's go ahead and clean this portion. Take a piece. You take a look. I got a piece of foam right there that's rubbing against my hose so it doesn't shave. Now I got to find a way to protect my hoses from chafing against this radiator firewall right here. I already have foam pieces right here that came from OEM but I'm not sure how long it's going to last because it feels like it's uh, deteriorating already. So I might want to get some type of loom or some way to protect this. So go to your hardware store and, and find some type of, I don't know, pieces of foam tape and start wrapping around these hoses that go through the radiator firewall. Grab some alcohol and a rag and clean the area between your cooler and this latch plastic right here. Let it dry. You're going to grab the remaining two foam pieces that came with the Hayden cooler box. You're going to tape one side to this plastic housing right here. And you're going to tape another piece on top of that. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the horns back, but not back over here, but we're going to custom one over on this side. Very simple to do. Let's go ahead and cut off our tie straps and release this harness. Okay. There we go. Find where your horn harness is, where are the, these two plugs, okay. We are going to plug in our horns first. Take the plugs and go ahead and plug the horns back in. This is what we're going to do now. We are going to take these horns and we are going to 
flip them so they're back to back. And we are going to take a M6 and a washer and we're going to screw it into this center beam hole. Check for clearance. You got plenty of clearance in the back of the horn. Now you're going to want to take out your, your gray plug, plug it back in. You're going to want to take the sensor and you're going to route it underneath here and plug it back down there where it belongs. I'm going to grab a couple of zip ties. I'm going to clean up the wiring. Make sure all the wiring are not chafing against anything, especially next to the radiator. Good. Things like this that are just hanging loose, you can zip tie it. Now we're going to get a roll of loom that I bought from Home Depot. It's 10 feet for about five, six bucks. I got some black electrical tape by 3M. Okay, so let's go ahead and start looming. This is so much easier if I did this with the bumper off, but I already, I, I had to put the car back together in order for me to go to Home Depot. So it's okay. I, I still have some access here. So let's get started, guys. I'm just going to get the loom and I'm just going to go around the whole entire hose here and just keep sliding it all the way down until it reaches to the end and that's about it. Loom is going to end about right here right before the clamp. Cut it off and right here I'm going to use some 3M electrical tape and I'm going to wrap around the ends of it on the loom itself not on the hose on the loom itself Now you're going to want to do this to the bottom hose also. There you go. At this point we're going to go ahead and put the battery back in here so we can test out our transmission cooler. The final piece of the puzzle is to start cutting away at our headlamp assembly plastic protective cover. So right here at the top, this is the top, this is the bottom, and this is where the hoses are supposed to go through, but it's not a perfect fitment. So what I did was I cut this a little bit back, I cut it about an inch back, and I folded it. I didn't cut it completely off because I don't want ragged edges riding up against my hose, so I just cut. I just cut right here here and I bent it back so it has a soft contact right here and right here we're going to have to cut back a little because the hose is going to be in the way. So I took a big pair of scissors and I'm going to start chomping away right here. Same thing right here and I'm going to bend it back. So let's go ahead and install this and see how it fits. Right here, I also made a cut. See that? It's going to hit the lines. We're going to go from underneath. Make sure you don't hit your tranny cooler. 
and there we go I'm going to start installing it actually it's a pretty nice fit okay done voila this is what we just accomplished here's the radiator here's the Hayden cooler here's our transmission we did not touch the upper hose of the radiator that upper line that we we're talking about do not touch this what we did was we interrupted the bottom hose the bottom hose is the return line to the transmission so all we did was remove this hose right and we took this hose the upper cooler hose and we hooked it up to this end and we took the bottom of the cooler hose and we hooked it up to the other end that's all we did and we removed this hose this hose being this piece right here all right guys so surprisingly that was a very successful mod that we just accomplished and I say we because uh, you guys were with me throughout the whole entire install I did this uh, I did this for you guys so let's let's go through some questions and answers okay so uh, why Hayden why Hayden when there is um, a vast array of transmission coolers out there so I'm gonna tell you why Hayden well one it's a popular brand that is widely used by GX owners how do I know because I do search the forums I do search the websites I do search YouTube and Hayden was the go-to transmission cooler uh, the worst thing that you can the worst thing that can happen is you using a non-popular brand and having to try to configure it to what is on YouTube and other DIY websites so what if uh, everything was on Hayden and you bought I don't know brand X and brand X uh, inlets and outlets were like facing this way and then Hayden's was facing this way and you would have to do your own configurations it's just so much easier for us to just copy and paste whatever is already out there and I think that's that's the easiest route to go okay so um, question number two why the Hayden 678 model there's other models there's bigger models there's smaller models why the 678 I chose the 678 for two reasons and two reasons only the first one was it was a perfect fit that did require complex bracket fabrications and the 678 is also recommended for up to 5,000 pounds I have a Curtis tow hitch that is rated up to 5,000 pounds do I need more than that no I don't my boat is less than 5,000 pounds. Everything I tow is less than 5,000 pounds. I don't need anything bigger than that. I don't need anything smaller than that. The, the, the Hayden 678 is perfect for what I am towing and what uh, Lexus uh, Curtis tow hitch is rated for. Because of these two reasons, I thought the combo of the two would make the 678 the obvious choice, right? So question number three, um, why not interrupt the upper radiator hose instead of interrupting the bottom radiator hose? Um, since the upper one is more accessible easier to remove the clamps and hoses and everything well I'm going to tell you why so the upper radiator hose is called the inlet which receives all the hot transmission fluid from your transmission we don't want to interrupt that line because we want the that we want the radiator to be the main source of the cool down period for our fluid before it goes through our Hayden transmission cooler once it reaches the Hayden transmission cooler, it's all ready to be supplying our transmission with optimal temperatures directly. So to put things into perspective, I've made a diagram for you guys. This first diagram is exactly what we did to our GX460. We interrupted the bottom cooler lines because we wanted this order of fluid flow. Hot transmission fluid flows out of the transmission and enters the radiator where it works hard to cool down not only the transmission fluid but also the radiator coolant by the time it leaves the radiator it provides the Hayden transmission cooler less work to work with since the fluid temperature has dropped significantly and since the Hayden transmission cooler is up front the cooling process is more optimal and since the last phase of this flow directly to your transmission this ideal of setup appoints your big radiator as the main source of the fluid cooling while the Hayden cooler is your secondary component before it reaches the transmission the second setup is for those of you that chose to interrupt the top 
radiator line for easier access. What you're doing is you're taking a hot transmission fluid straight to your tiny cooler to tackle the first phase of cool down before it sends the still kind of hot fluid to the radiator. The problem with this scenario is that the radiator is not only trying to cool the radiator fluid, but is trying to also cool down your transmission fluid while being partially blocked by the Hayden transmission cooler. This setup sends warmer temperature fluids directly to your transmission, as well as making your system work harder by appointing your Hayden tranny cooler as the main source of fluid cooling, while your radiator is your secondary source. Question number four, why use foam and rubber between the brackets instead of putting the structure straight to the bracket itself, metal to metal? Um, the reasons I did not um, attach the cooler directly to the structure is because our vehicle goes through thousands and thousands of tweaks and bends throughout the day, especially if we're off-roading, overlanding or whatever, going through rocks and gravel, it's tweaking. Our structure is tweaking and we don't even see it, okay? It puts a lot of stresses uh, on the metal to metal contact and will eventually lead to hairline cracks and ultimately shorten the life of your transmission cooler. And that's why. Um, so five, why stainless steel um, brackets and hardware? So everything you use has to withstand the elements in order to function and do its job for the life of your cooler. Rust will be your main enemy, of course. If not stainless steel, you could use anything else, uh, but make sure it is anti-corrosive um, and will not create rust in the future. So question number six, why fill up the cooler with tranny fluid prior to installation? For the same reason we bleed our brakes and our power steering and our radiator coolant, we do not want large air pockets into our cooling system. Your cooling lines are not 11 by 10 guys it's it's not this small if you break it down and if you extend these cooling fins end to end it will extend to the end of this driveway and that my friends would be the length of coolant that is not cooling your transmission question number seven will this void my warranty this question is asked a lot for every single mod that I've done um, I'm going to answer it like this. A lot of it has to do with common sense, okay? So if you have a flat tire and you bring it into the dealership and it voids your warranty because you installed a transmission cooler, that's, that's just ridiculous, guys. That one has nothing to do with another, so use common sense. Um, and if the dealer says something like that, then they're just, they're, they're just trying to find excuses not to uh, honor your warranty. So if the transmission, if, if your electrical system was fried up and they found transmission fluid on one of the electrical plugs because you didn't tighten a bracket, then yeah, maybe so. Yeah, that, that is a more obvious reason to not honor your warranty. Okay, so um, one more. I'd like to conclude this with um, lessons learned throughout this mod. Uh, one of the lessons learned um, I want to advise you guys on is when you remove the OEM hose clamps, reuse them on the Hayden hoses. Don't, don't use the Hayden hose clamps, the one where you have to use a quarter inch socket to tighten them. The Lexus OEM hose clamps work so much better and it's so much easier to, to install. So I recommend you use the OEM hose clamps uh, whenever possible. Um, also, Clean, clean your engine as you go. Wherever transmission fluid is splattered on, clean it up right away because you want to detect leakage or any type of seepage before you install the battery back on, uh, before you install the bumper back on, or before you even start your, your vehicle. Because after you start your vehicle and then you start getting a fluid splatter, you're not gonna exactly know where it came from because your engine compartment was already covered with fluid in the first place. So make sure you clean as you go. Make sure it's a clean, clean engine compartment before you even start your vehicle. Before I finish out this video, I wanna give special thanks to uh, ACRAD 
from clublexus.com. I also want to thank uh, Sydney Kendi Chan from Speed Foundry for guiding me through some of the steps and answering some of the stupid questions I had. Um, without them, I think I would have taken a lot longer to do this mod. So thank you guys and, and, and girl. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this mod and we're out of here. Peace.